Hey, Truffle Foragers. Welcome to another episode of the Truffle Forager podcast. I'm your host, Ben Sweet. And in today's episode, I'm going to be sitting down and having a chat with Louise Ferguson. Super, super excited about this conversation and to be able to share it with you. Louise is the chair lady, chairwoman of the Legato Romandolo Society here in the UK. And for those of you who don't know, the Legato Romandolo is a dog breed known as the truffle hunting breed. So we're going to dive deep on that breed and the dog and why they are the truffle hunting dog and ask Louise, who's got great perspective and great knowledge and great information about the, the entire, everything to do with the breed. So I really can't wait to get a real expert opinion on this and to share that with you. Not only that, Louise is also a Legato breeder as well here in the UK. I think she's one of the most established and sort of recognized breeders here in the UK, if not wider in Europe as well. So there's some really interesting stuff that she shares. I mean, information about whether you know if you're interested about getting a dog getting a legato certainly this is a podcast episode you'd want to listen to probably a, a couple of times um, not only that louise has competed with her legatos in the premier truffle dog legato competition in italy as well so it's really interesting to me i've only really recently come um come about learning about this competition and it sounds so exciting unfortunately my dog's not a legato so i won't really be able to enter anytime soon but really interesting getting louise's take on it um, and i've already got plans to go um to go to this competition with a fellow truffle hunter of mine who does have a legato so that's a road trip and a half in the w waiting in the wings so i can't wait for that um, and and also just to mention as well louise is a really established um artist she's been an artist for a large part of her life um, and i think more recently she's been doing some legato artwork as well so if you're watching this on YouTube, I've actually done a screen share of some of the latest artwork she shared with me. But certainly go and check out her website, check out her artwork um, and then just listen in and enjoy this podcast. You know, it's been a real pleasure to speak with her and I can't wait for you guys to just chill back, listen in and um, get, get out of it what, what I hope you get out of it. Um, if you've got any questions or anything else that you'd like me to follow up with Louise or you want to reach out to her directly, then um, you can always give me a, give me a shout. Um, anything else um, let me know and we can take it from there and just before we dive in if you've liked what you've heard and you like this sort of content and you've got any friends or family members who you think might also like this sort of truffley dog foraging um, lovely magical content then please do go and share and tell them about the podcast because I'd really appreciate you helping me sort of grow the show and get a bit of traction uh, because the more it grows then the more the more I can do the more time I can put into it and the more content I can release uh, so I really appreciate you doing that for me if you've got any sort of value from it if not no worries all good uh, just sit back listen and hopefully you'll enjoy uh, the chat that I have with Louise today take care for now see you soon Hello, Louise. Welcome to the Truffle Forager podcast. Hello. Well, um, thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to this chat. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say before we dive in, you know, really, really appreciate you um, saying yes um, to, to even giving up, you know, a good chunk of your evening to have a chat with me. And uh, just really, really looking forward to uh, getting to know you, uh, asking you some interesting truffley dog related questions and seeing where this goes so yeah really appreciate it thank you so much my, my pleasure uh my dog's just come in unfortunately you can't see him on here but on cue he's come in to join the meeting so he oh. might come up on my lap come here come here come well, here perhaps come that's here. a perfect place no. for us to start so which which uh, you've got more than one haven't you um <laughs> hang on let's see if i can get him up <laughs> <laughs> this is Dario. Oh. Dario. Uh, Dario, he was bred in um, Emilia Romagna. Um, I imported him from Italy, um, and uh, yeah, so he's my my older dog, and he is um, the father of this one. This is Sage. So these are my oh, okay. two main working uh, dogs. Come on, <laughs> working um, truffle dogs and gun dogs. So um, I've got. I've also got an older one, uh, Dora, who's um, a sort of a golden colour, and she's she's an excellent little truffle dog too. Again, a legato. Um, she didn't start truffling until she was ten, so she's now twelve and a half. But she's she's an excellent little truffle dog, and driven by the motivation of eating the truffle. So you have to be really quick with her um, if you don't yeah. get there in time. It's got. Amazing. So you've got um, 
Dara, the oldest, then Dario, and then Sage. Do you, is that all you have, or do you have more? I know you've got, uh, oh, you're involved Dora's, in breeding and everything. Uh, Dora's the oldest, uh, then I've got Dario, and then I've got Sage, son of, son of um, Dario. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, I have three living here, um, but I have, I do have other dogs elsewhere. My daughter's got two of my dogs, and I've also got, um, uh, girls that I breed from that live elsewhere. They don't live with me. They just come with me to ha come here to have puppies. So, oh. um, yes, yeah, so I have several, I, I own several, but only three live here. Fantastic. <laughs> Now, on this podcast, the subject of um, your breed of dog has come up a few times, but uh, I guess no yep. one more so than you has probably been more qualified to talk about the breed. And so um, it would be really fantastic for, you know, you know, imagine there's people here that have never heard of the breed. If you could just just share, I guess maybe we could start okay. actually with why you even ended up buying your first Legato. Um, well, this goes back to um, I got my first Legato in two thousand and nine. Um, I'm married to a man who is allergic to dogs, um, oh, right. which wasn't particularly well planned. But there you go. Um, yeah. So, for when we lived in London, I, I never imagined that we'd we'd ever have dogs. And when we moved out to the country, um, the walking around here is so lovely. And he sort of one day said, you know let's get a dog. So I started doing some research into different dog breeds and looking for a dog that uh, was non-shedding. Um, I looked at all sorts of different breeds. Uh, my A friend of mine said, have you ever looked at a Legato? And I was, I'd never heard of a Legato. So I did some research and there was a breeder near Horsham um, and I got my first, um, my first girl, Lola, uh, who's now 14 and a half and living with my daughter, I got her. So, uh, and at the time I had no intent, I hadn't even thought about doing the truffling, although it interested me. Um, I then went on to have uh, my first litter and Dora here is from my first litter. She's 12 and a half. Um, so I gradually became more and more interested in the breed and I was invited to come to join the Legato Romagnolo Club of Great Britain committee in 2012 um, and then in 2016 how did, how did I actually became them. How did that invitation come about oh, and, and then how did the chairmanship come about? So uh, because uh, the breeder of um, Lola uh, Gail Stenton, she was the secretary of the club and she okay. um, she recruited me to join the, uh, I, I was co-opted first and then and then she invited me to join the committee and then um, in 2016 the um, then chairman who was with, with Gail Stenton um, and Kemp, they were the, the two women that brought the Legato into the UK back in the mid 90s, 1990s. So um, Anne Kemp stepped down and Gail Stanton invited me to um, uh, put my name forward as chairman. So, yes, that was 2016. Um, and uh, since then, I've I, I judged them. I started judging them in 2015. And last year was approved to give um, CCs in the breed. Um, I don't know what I mean. Some of your listeners may know, I've heard of the breed since uh, Crufts last year, when the first Legato um, won Best in Show at Crufts. That's Crux, right, yeah. I um, forgot about that. Which was quite a historic moment. Um, yeah. And then uh, this year, the Kennel Club have given us uh, the breed um, uh, CCs, which means that now you can make up a, ch a champion in the UK. Um, it's, it was the only country left that hadn't, wasn't giving CCs in the breed. So it's a very exciting year for the Legato Romagnolo. So I must admit, about, sorry, to, yeah. sorry to interject, I'm, I'm completely oblivious to what a CC is. You mentioned um, champion, uh, so I'm uh, now uh, thinking, I think I know what you mean, but I'm not. Yeah, so you, you have to... Um, you have to collect three um, CCs to be able to make up a champion. Um, and uh, so uh, we will now be able to make up champions in the breed in the UK. So, um, and we've got, it's all a bit complicated, but if you're not into showing, but we've yeah. been given, the kennel given us three um, 
the sets of tickets. Um, so at Crufts uh, this year in March is our first set of tickets. So um, everyone will be wanting that that ticket. Um, unfortunately, we're going to get a lot of people coming in from the um, overseas because they'll all be chasing it. Um, so we will probably, uh, yeah. And then there's another, uh, one of the breed clubs has got a, um, another set. Uh, the other, I'm I'm the chairman of the Logotto Romagnolo Club of Great Britain. There's also the Logotto Romagnolo Association and they are, have got a, a set to give. And then in August, I will be giving a, um, the third set um, at the National Gun Dog Association. Um, so everyone's very excited about. Um, so I think the entries this year will be quite high. So that's that's obviously all the showing side of it. Um, and uh, as a breeder, we're I'm sort of very conscious of breeding um, dogs that conform to the breed standard. And the breed standard is. Uh, has really written um with the working dog in mind with the the legato has uh, originally its original breed function was as a, a waterfowl retriever as a mm. it's in the just in the breed standard it's called an ancient duck retriever and also a truffle dog so originally going back sort of 200 years it was it it was in the um the Emilia Romagna region of Italy, um, these little curly coated dogs were used in the marshlands um, to retrieve um, ducks and, and, and um, waterfowl um, when they're shot. When they were shot in the, in the marshlands, they, these little dogs would go out in a, they'd be in a little wooden punt and they'd put what four or five of them and the game was shot and the dog will go over the side and swim off and, and bring the game back to um, the hunters. Um, and then in the late 18th century, the marshlands were largely um, drained um, so that they could create more um, agricultural land. And so the dog, the, the function of the Logotto changed. Um, all those marshmen needed, you know, they they needed another job to do so they they started using them as truffle dogs and in italy they are used primarily as truffle dogs um and in fact they are the only breed of dog in the world that spe is a specialized truffle hunter so um they are uh, you know absolute naturals um at finding at finding truffles they really are it takes no time at all to train a legato once they associate the smell of a truffle with a reward they it that, that's it they they know exactly what they're doing they they're really easy to train yeah i was, was going to ask you about this cuz like what makes them i guess different to say another dog breed that might be suitable um and is it something beyond just physical uh, merits and things like that or is it something sort of deeper rooted longer lasting that's you know in their in their brain chemistry over you know the, the centuries of breeding because it's interesting you say that because uh, my friend julie who i've interviewed who is a white truffle hunter um she's never had she's got uh seven or eight truffle dogs now um and she's never had until recently uh, a legato and she got a legato about two years ago now um, she has her own challenges because she's managing seven or eight dogs and perhaps can't give the legato the attention it needs sometimes. But she did explain to me that um, in its first season when they were hunting the summer truffle, there was a moment where she just got it, you know, for the, I think with the white truffles is perhaps a longer story, I think, for her at the minute. But she just got it with the black truffles, or at least that's a story she shared with me. And um, it seems to be resonating with what you're saying now. But yeah, it, what what is it about the legato that, makes it the ultimate truffle dog in in your opinion i mean obviously it, it is centuries of of breeding and and selective breeding of dogs that have an aptitude uh, um, as as a working dog um the italian breed standard says that they have lost that instinct to um to to hunt game um and that they're not distracted from from truffle well I kind of slightly question that. I have one that, funnily enough, my legato that comes from Emilia Romagna, Dario, is is can be distracted by game. He always has to do 
his circle of the area, make sure there's nothing there game-wise, and then he will focus on truffles, whereas his son will drop his nose and is instantly into truffle mode. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't know, but a lot, a lot of it is, you know, it is selective breeding of, 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 of working ability. Um, the breed standard, um, although it's adapted, obviously, the, the, the breed standard also describes that little water dog with its curly coat, um, um, a waterproof coat. You know, that obviously goes back to its its um, water dog heritage. But um, uh, the construction of a Legotto, uh, they are a very sort of smallish, but sort of fairly square with um, moderate angulation so that they move efficiently and economically. So they cover the ground, they can work for hours at a time. Um, everything about them is moderate. Um, they've, um, yeah, they've got um, extremely long nails. So the quick inside the nail of a legato goes down a lot further so that mm. they've adapted these very, you know, efficient sort of, you know, um, the digging action with the, with the nails, they're very efficient. And of course, they've got an exceptional um, scenting ability, which again, we'll go back to the gun dog, but also they all have exceptional noses. They really, really do. But having said that, you can train any breed of dog to find truffles. It's just mm. a matter of them associating that smell with um, a high value reward. Um, so that in general is how you train them. Some of them are not necessarily motivated by food, but they, you know, they, uh, but, you know, I've, I've had experiences where um, I've just taken Legato out with mine and they've learnt pretty quickly what they're doing um, and picked it up almost naturally without me having to do very much preparation. Um, Sage's sister lives with my daughter and we recently introduced her to smell of truffle. Yeah, she'd find the, the truffle dummy in the house, but you know, she wasn't that bothered. I took her out one time and she she was just excited about the treats. She didn't realize at that point that she needed to do something to earn the treat. And she was a bit surprised everyone else was getting treats. But the following time I took her out, it clicked. And I, uh, the others were all, my husband was dealing with the others, that, but if they had a truffle, I looked down to my right and there she was eating something. And I went over and she'd find a truffle. I could see she'd nibbled the top of it. It was in the ground. She'd nibbled the top of it. Um, so she was rewarding herself for that. And after that, that yeah. she fat went on and found two or three. She did it instinctively. So she wasn't even yeah. doing it for the, for the piece of sausage. She was like, oh, I like the taste of this truffle. So she was just helping herself to truffle. <laughs> Cheeky so, monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's mm. amazing. How did you first go about, well, did you first start training your dogs gun dogs or did you do truffle dog or was it at the same time? How how did that come about? Uh, it was pretty much at the same time. Um, I started both, well, Dario I didn't get till he was about 19 weeks old because I imported him. He'd already been introduced to the smell of uh, white truffle with his breeder. Um, mm. But uh, I like to train mine as gun dogs because, it, because obviously the the obedience um, is very useful. To have an obedient dog is is very useful. And mine are trained to the whistle. And um, but I keep it very separate. I, when I'm training for gun dog work, it's very different to when I'm training for truffling. It's a different. Uh, I mean, obviously with the gun dog work, it's um, I'm very much in control, and I'm and I'm. Um, asking them to do things for me whereas the truffling they're in control there i am following them i'm i am watching their body language and you know if i take them into a woodland i don't know whether there's truffles in there i might have an idea but i don't know so i can't really go and control that they, i have to just watch their body language so it's a very different method of working but um they they seem to know the difference um I have had one situation where when Sage was quite young and I was gun dog, I was with a trainer and um, she'd put a, a, I was standing in woodland, she was outside the woodland and she'd put a dummy for me, for him to, I was going to send him to retrieve it. And I sent him and he went about three strides, dropped his nose and found a truffle. Yeah. And he, the trainer was so amazed. She said, oh, my God, can we forget the lesson? I just want to watch him truffling. So he then continued yeah. to, they, a lot of them were false truffles, but he then 
spent the next half an hour truffling. So, you know, that's the only time I've ever, ever had a situation where I've, I, he's been distracted from the gun dog work to do the truffling. But, you know, in general, they know by what I'm wearing. Yeah. Um, I have a truffle bag over my shoulder if we're going truffling. But equally, if I'm going gun dog training, I have a, um, my gun dog vest and they know that, that that's their job to do that day. Um, Super yeah. interesting. So, yeah. So the gun dog work, the, the obedience training is is important from a puppy, um, but you can introduce the, the truffling whenever you like, really. But uh, I try and do it fairly early. Amazing. Uh, just coming back to the Dario and the breeder already introducing truffle scent. How did yes. the, that breeder introduce truffle scent, and do you do it the same way, or is there, a, you know, um, what would you, yeah. What, I, what did well, they I'll do? Tell you how I, do it. Um, I can't tell you exactly how he did it because I was obviously wasn't there, but I yeah. did when I went out to choose him. Uh, he was about 11, 12 weeks old when I went out to choose him. Um, and he'd been hit hiding little pieces of truffle um, outside on his land and they were finding it. Um, but I know for sure. And I and I myself uh, will introduce truffle? the smell of or... truffle early. Uh, for him, it was white truffle. For me, obviously, it's black truffle because I don't yeah. have I don't have access to white truffles. But for example, my recent litter, um, uh, I would you can feed the the, the bitch um, truffles and it will come through the milk. Um, some people rub truffle oil into the into the nipples so that when the puppy feeds, it it's it, it inhales that smell of truffle and again it's rewarded with that with the with the, with the taste of milk. Um, I put truffles, black truffles, in the whelping box with the puppies before they'd even opened their eyes, and they are drawn towards that smell. They will crawl across the across the vet bed to that smell. Um, and then, as they got a bit bigger, when they got when they were running around, I just give them a little black truffle, and they'd play with it. They'd pick it up in their mouth. They'd run around with it, just so that they were just getting used to it and, and realizing it's it, it was fun. Um, and and had a had a, a reward and I I uh, I would I'd roll the truffle along the ground they'd pick it up and I'd call them back to me and I'd reward them so even before they left here they had an idea of what a truffle was and that truffle meant fun and enjoyment and and a nice tasty reward. Nice. Do so, your dogs have yeah. um? Well, what what is your ideal truffle indication that you? would train ideally i know you mentioned i think it was sage that possibly would get away with eating a truffle if possible or what's your ideal indication uh, uh, well i i mean what as in the dog indication to me that there's a truffle there yeah or... what, what would you, what do you normally aim to train for or is it a case of the dog so... digs it up and you have to get in there before they eat it no pretty much <laughs> <laughs> so i so i <laughs> Uh, and and, the, um, and it's uh, because I have three, I take three out sometimes. Yeah. I, well, I've learned to take three out when I'm on my own because you can end up with all three of them in, in a hole, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's easier when you've got someone else, when my husband's out with me. or um, But you just watch their body language and you can tell when they're on the scent of a truffle. Um, mm. You can tell by, the, you know, they'll, they can be trotting along and they'll catch the scent of a truffle and they'll change direction and they'll sort of, They'll be trotting around, and then and then their their nose will pinpoint where the truffle is. Um, and at that point, if they're a distance from me, I normally call them or distract them, um, so I have time to get there. But to be honest, the Italians um, always say the you want them to, to 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 like the taste of truffles. You want a dog that is motive a dog that likes the taste of truffle is much more motivated. And when I first took my dogs to Italy, it was before I'd actually well first took part in what they call the tourist class, which um that so the the, the Italians have a um yeah. the Italian breed club have a show in October and they have uh they have the two days of showing and then they have a truffle trial and there is what they call the truff the tourist class. So you can take your dogs and you basically get instruction. Um and they place lots of little bits of white truffle out um, over this area of land. And uh, I took Dario 
and this is before I'd started truffling. And I was horrified when he started digging it up and eating it. And they said, no, 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 no problem. Doesn't matter. Let him eat it. Um, uh, they positively encourage you to let your dog eat it, particularly when they're novice. So that is part of what drives them to be able to get to get to the, to the truffle. Um, and uh, so when I'm training people with their dogs, um, I had a training day last week and I had lots of novice dogs and we put some truffles out on the, some woodland. We had some truffles, just little pieces of frozen truffle, some sitting yeah. on the top and some we dug down in into it. And I was just letting each dog individually go over them. I let the novice dogs go first and they were able to just take the truffles off the top. And I said, if you can get there and let them swap it for a piece of sausage, fine. If not, just let it eat, let the dog eat it so that they and all those dogs dropped their noses and they were really focused and working. And some of them have never even smelt truffle. They want more uh, experienced dogs. Um, they went over the ground once the other was was cleared um and they tended to have more time because the dog was digging to swap you know truffle yeah. for reward but with a novice dog let them eat it um so mine still have to get the odd truffle they have slightly learnt that if they're quick enough and they're far enough away they can and i don't mind that you know i really don't mind um but I, it's it's watching their body language. They'll start to dig. I will try and distract them so I can get into the hole. But I let them dig. Um, so the Italians encourage digging. The Italian working standard, they're marked for digging. That if they don't dig, they they are marked down. So um, it's it's all about that partnership between you and your dog. Um, and you've got to be able to call the dog oh, okay, oh, and have access to the hole. But basically, you should get down on your knees and work with your dog. And the dogs love that. They love that bond and they love you to get involved with them. Um, so, yes, I encourage mine to dig and I encourage mine to, um, you know, well, I don't encourage them to eat it. But if they do, fine. It's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a hobby for, men, well, I think probably a hobby for many of us in the UK getting into this, perhaps not so for other uh, travel hunters uh, in other parts of the uh, world, even. Um, what have, who, who have been your sort of biggest, in, in, biggest influences when it comes to you learning the skill of uh, truffle dog training? Um, well, in terms of the, of truffle training um i've got a great friend denise stolder who um lives in switzerland she mm. um uh, has a she does truffle truffle courses and i first met her um oh actually on my i met her on my way to italy one day uh of what, one of my trips down there um and got to know her and she then came over the following year she came over to the uk we've done she's done two courses in the uk um and she's a great teacher she um very much um she she was she encourages you to get very excited and animated with the truffle and when your dog finds a truffle you know she says you've got to get so excited about the truffle and so and the dog picks up on that and and the dog realizes this is an important you know it's important to you so they they're so keen to please um she at first she was saying that we british are far too reserved and you know uh we've got to, we've got to get excited with our dogs and yeah. certainly when my dogs when my dogs are working and they find something, my voice becomes much more high pitched and like this. And the dogs and the dogs love that. Um, so she's been a huge influence and 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 incredibly helpful and encouraging. She has Legato herself. She's had them for longer than I have. Um, so she did the two courses in 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 the UK. And then I still hadn't, we still hadn't found them in the UK. My dogs were finding them, you know, the, the dummies on my land. So on my on our way to Italy about three years ago, I asked her whether I could come out with her in her woodland. So we stopped mm. in uh, in Switzerland. Uh, we went up in her her woodland. Uh, Sage was about eleven months old at that time, um, and she brought her lovely legato um, honey out with us, um, and 
when Honey found something, she'd pull her off and I'd put my dogs in and let them smell and, and they'd sort of take over. Um, and in fact, Sage did find his first truffle by himself in those woods. He Again, because we'd got all excited about Honey and her digging and her finding her truffles, he would thought, oh, this is fun. That You know, they obviously get very yeah. excited about this. He found his first truffle. And we've got it on film, actually. It's so lovely. Oh, really? Um, he, his little face, it's like, oh, I've done something really good. And he got, you know, got sausages and fuss. Um, and uh, so, yes, it was it was a very exciting moment. And as I say, I've got it on film, which is quite fun to look back at. Um, I then we also about two or three days later, we went we booked to see a, an Italian guy um, and went to do some a bit of truffling on his land. But he put it was too early for the white truffle, but he put um, black truffle on his land. Um, and it was lovely to watch the way he engaged with my dogs and worked with them and get, got down on the ground with them. And again, they were both really um, sort of excited about, you know, they really wanted to get involved with him. And he was just so sweet with them. And the way he, he stroked them and encouraged them was lovely. Um, that was the year we also, we did the tourist class. So that also sort of um, uh, built up on that, you know, within so for a week or so we would you know we'd introduce them to um, three opportunities um and then it was so funny on our way back from Italy that year we stopped off in a service station one of these air places that you go and you can have a picnic it was we sat at a picnic table and you know it was um and the dogs started digging and they found we ended up with a heap of truffles in front of us so that was the very first wow. time they initiated finding truffles by them oh, we had no idea there were truffles there it was quite extraordinary and they just they were going around it was in the grass under the trees um and we ended up with a pile of truffles in front of us on the table it was quite extraordinary so they cracked it <laughs> yeah it's a good um, picnic so stop to remember that one I don't, I don't even know which which service it did. We, we actually came the same route back, and I was like, which one was it? So I want to go back there, but it was quite funny. And there was an, uh, a French, um, I think he was from the electricity board or something, in his bright orange fluorescence with his father. He stood there with his hands on his hips going, oh, my goodness, these dogs were just, just producing these truffles. He was, it was amazing. So that was that was the first moment where they really had clicked. And I think it was, uh, there was an element of competition between the two. Um, I can't remember which one found the first one, but they, it was, uh, we were off. So when we came back to the UK, I took them um, out locally here on the Turf Downs and yeah, they, they were finding truffles. So that, that's really how it started for me or for my dog. Amazing. Um, working with another dog, another legato with honey and then, more into you know exposure with with the Italians and them encouraging us, um, encouraging me and um, and that's how that's how we did it really. Fantastic. So and just the the Italian the Italian truffle trial which you've been just talking about. What what did you say that was called again? What's the name of the this um, this trial? Does it have event. a name? Well, the event is the event. Yeah. It, uh, well, the, so it's the Club Italiano Legotto. That's the, the breed club. And right. they have the um, a truffle trial. It's all, well, this year it's um, it's the mid, so it's about the weekend of the 17th, 18th, 19th of October. Normally, they just have the two days of showing and they have one day of, of truffle trial. Um, this last, so last year, um, so last year I had hoped to enter I'd, I'd taken part the previous year um, and Dario in fact had um, been graded excellent so they're graded in the show ring and they're graded in the truffle trial um, so if they are graded in the truffle trial and the show ring they earn the CIL working class certificate, which means they can then, there's a working class show class. So it proves they're a working dog. So they're a working right. dog, but they're also a show dog. Um, so I'd want to, so we did that the previous year. So it's the same um, organization that does the show side of things yeah, and also right. then the truck. Exactly. So they right, organize okay. a show and they organize the truffle trial. 
so he'd he'd got his um he'd been graded excellent i think he was the first I think well, he was the first UK dog to be very excellent. Um, or UK brilliant. trained dogs, of course, he was in in, in Italy, but yeah. UK trained dog. At the same time, uh, there was a um, Sybil. I'm just going to turn my notifications off. Um, That's right. Who was graded very good um, and excellent in the showing. So both of them got their working class certificates. So that was in 22. So last year, um, I had hoped to do it again, but unfortunately. They start. They start the. Um, they open the entry for the working trial, or that was started on a on a Thursday night at five five p.m. By nine minutes past, all one hundred eighty. I think it's one hundred eighty or two hundred. All the places are gone, so I wow. missed out. I couldn't enter my boys. All the working places, all the entries had gone, so I was really fed up with that. I showed them last year, but didn't manage to do the truffle trial, but. Sybil, I was going to ask. Who had got oh, the, sorry. Go on, go on, go on, go on. So Sybil, who had also done so well the year previous year, they managed to enter. So she took part in the truffle trial, the CIL truffle trial at in Bagno di Romagna last year, and unbelievably, she was placed. She was placed third in her class in the wow. open truffle. Class. Is that out of um, hundred and so she was or... no, well no out, so each or... out of those hundred and eighty there are different sections, so different what they call batteries. Right. So of yeah. her group, she was graded third. So she was the very first English dog to be on the podium with so there was you know there was the Italian and a and a I think it was an but you know she was on that podium um wow. with with the professional truffle guys, truffle trainers, she it was amazing, absolutely incredible. So that little dog, she, she, she it, it was well. I was hugely. I, actually, I bred her, so I was particularly proud. But um, yeah. and Lynn Monk, who 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 handled her and owns her, she was um, amazed and excited, and uh, so it was amazing. So um, for, and for and on certainly on the previous year occasion, occasion neither of Adario or Sybil had scented white truffle ever. So both of them worked incredibly well. They just switched from the scent of truff, a black truffle, which obviously is much uh, more delicate um, scent, mm. to the, I mean, the, the white truffle, they just go into another gear. They yeah. rank up. It's like, whoa, it's, it, 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 it's quite extraordinary to watch. And they were both so driven. And certainly watching him, I'd never seen him work like that before. And she um, obviously did the same um, in the trial last year. And... Um, Proved proved that she she knew exactly what she was doing, even though she wasn't familiar with the smell. So yeah, it was very exciting. Wow. Good on her. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how does one go about entering into one of those trials or the show thing? And and I think you've sort of alluded to it, but is it just a case of going online and registering, probably paying a fee, or or is there anything else involved? Because, I mean, just speaking well, to Tom McGowan to last week, you know, he was keen to, to right. get involved in it in the future. I'm sure there's other people, uh, particularly who are coming yeah. through the UK sort of side of things, who would dream of that. Um, I mean, so obviously, they have to be a Legato, first and yeah. foremost, because it's a trial for, for, for only Legatos. But yes, it's, it's just a case of. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm afraid. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> it is. A this one um although i think it would be i mean i have to say as a breed club we did we did a mini trial on along the same sort of um working loosely on their working standard so i i would like to start doing them here obviously not on mm. white truffle so you know that's something to, to think about in this country doing a similar similar thing but and not necessarily just legato but that's a whole other you know that's something mm. uh, you know for a conversation in the future but in sure. terms of uh Entering as a as a legato in the legato um, Italian legato trial, um, they need to be registered and have a pedigree, so they need to be a registered right. legato. But yes, it's a, just a case of going online and being very quick. Being quick, um, yeah. I was going to say last year, it everyone was complaining they managed to they, they missed out. So this year, they're doing two day a two day truffle trial. We've got two days: Thursday, Friday showing. Saturday, Sunday, two days of truffle trial. So hopefully, we'll all, the more people will be able to enter. 
Um, so, but it's, is it it's, open it's to spectators as well, or is it more just a case of the owners it, and the dogs? It's not, or? it's not very easy to um, be a spectator because <laughs> yeah. it's up in the wood, it's up in the mountains. So, and they tend to go up, you know, quite sort of. Um, difficult terrain and yeah. so it's not really it's not really conducive to going to watch the actual trial you can watch the tourist class um yeah. but it's not easy to get up there and, and and see it um and they go out of sight because so basically each judge um he has a long strip of ground um each dog has fresh ground so certainly when i did it um it started at the top of the mountain and you had this long, narrow strip going down and it was divided into sections about the size of a tennis court, I suppose, maybe slightly less than that. So, and there was tape indicating okay. the beginning, the start and the end of each. So I was, so I was told, don't go past that piece of tape. Um, Cause obviously that's the next dog's fresh ground, but I, but Dario could, cover his own ground and anything behind so it's all fresh ground um for each dog um so uh yes so that that's that's how they do it um and, and they, each they, dog is given 10 minutes were they hidden hidden baits or are they sort of you know potluck whatever hidden yeah. baits so they no, know no, 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 no. it's too early for white truffles so they buy a quantity of white truffle chop it into pieces about the size of um what about your thumbnail um yeah but, uh and they are and they are hidden they are dug, dug in um i'm trying to win they do i mean they must i was thinking they must do it the same morning because if you were to put it out the night before maybe the wild animals will come and eat it all but anyway mm. i don't know when they do that but i yeah, do yeah. know that they buy quantity of white truffle and um it's it's all um hidden it's not natural Excellent. So, so how um, how are you then being uh, judged? Okay, Based do you want me to read you, you the? Yeah, I mean, well, if you no. Well, yes, yes, it's partly that. Um, so, hang on, I did actually print off the the working standard. Um, hang on, let's see if I can find it. So, um, they, I mean, this is an Italian. This is the Italian um, sort of translation. So it might not make um so basically they say the will which is obviously the motivation the legato right. must show greedy continuous and determined action its own initiative and not repeatedly stimulated by the handler's enticements good determination in tackling any difficult terrain so the dog's got to kind of work independently and be mm -hmm. really motivated rather than you having to come on come on you know and encourage him yeah um the search the search will adapt to the type of terrain with an unofficially wide radius to show to allow to uh, the dog to cover a good amount of ground and at the same time it will have an extremely careful and diligent it will um sorry uh uh hang on start again search the search will adapt to the type of environment with an unofficially wide radius to allow good um cover a good amount of ground and at the same time it will have have to be extremely careful and diligent to my thing has cut off the thing so i can um That's right. uh, yeah so basically they judge them on the search um on the gate which is the way they move so they want uh, uh, the dog to have an optimal uh, as a lively and easy trot which denotes the dog's joy in carrying out its work um so they have various sort of um, standards for the way it moves, but basically it's got to be enthusiastic, cover the ground nicely. Um, all factory qualities, ability to resolve an em emanation will be evaluated by going decisively to the hole. Um, in the sniffing of the emanation, in the sniffing on the emanation of the ripe truffles carried out by the wind. So they, they, they watch the dog. So they watch it scent. If it catch it on the wind, they air scent, and then they follow that scent, and then they and it's about how they find that truffle and and narrow down and pinpoint where the, exactly where the truffle is. Um, there's a they have marks for the connection um, with the handler. Um, so uh and they also have marks for how the dog 
digs. Um, uh, the dog can 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 dig. Um, the, do the, the dog must allow the handler to go in if necessary, if they want to. They're allowed to step back and dig the area around the truffle to see if they've kicked out the truffle. But then they must, if they haven't, they need to go back. So they're basically, they're marked on their digging ability. Um, so, so basically, yes, there's that long list of, of different things that they, that they, they, um, that they judge. Um, but it's wow. about it's the dog's attitude and and gait and um, scenting ability is is very important and its connection with its owner. Awesome. And you mentioned Dario received a excellent mark. What what are the different tiers of markings in in that? Not, uh, not in, well, it was is excellent. it different in the tourist class and different in the main class? In the tourist class, they don't. They give in the tourist class. Um, uh, I think they do actually I must look and see I did have you get a little write up which uh, they comment on how dog the dog and I think they do give a grade on that but basically when the actual truffle trial there's excellent very good good and there's one below that um, but the excellent and the very good um, can qualify you if you if they've done well in the show ring they get that's what qualifies them for the working class certificate um, oh, right. because so they have to uh, yeah. do well in the show ring before they can go in the top truffle trial bit they don't have to some oh, right. people just do the truffle and the funny thing is so um because obviously legato have um a thick curly coat and in the show mm. ring they have to um have enough coat to show the the, the quality of the coat and the, and the quality of the, the the undercoat and the curl so normally they expect to have about two to three centimeters of coat um the uh, professional truffle men, on the other hand, flip their coat, their dogs down to nothing because the coat really it catches on undergrowth and it's it's not particularly helpful for a truffle dog. Yeah. So you'll see that so those that do both showing and working, um, and for example, last year the the bit uh, the 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 bitch that won, um, she so she was in the show ring. Um, she did extremely well in the show ring. She got marks for that. Um, and then uh, once she'd finished, the grooming table came out and her owner clipped her off so that she all the coat had gone. The following day, she was uh, worked in the truffle trial and her combined marks in the show ring and in the truffle trial meant that she was the overall um, best legato in show. Oh, in wow. that she proved herself as a show dog and proved herself as a working dog but she they clipped off the coat so that she yeah. was a truffle dog the following day. obviously for us we don't bother to clip the coat off but you do see that you see the coat comes off and then the next day they're 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 unrecognizable and they're they're in their little in their working mode but not every not all the um competitors in the truffle trial will be showing their dogs it's just some mm. of them or, or some of us like to do both um and prove that they their confirmation is uh conforms to the breed standard which um describes the ideal working dog what a fantastic thing to get involved in do they do they give um i'm guessing they give prizes or a certificate or something for standard markings or placings or things like that or, or is it just a yes yes i mean sage sage has for the last two years running has been placed fourth in the show class and have got oh, wow. two two plates i can go and get the show so you oh um, wow yeah uh i mean oh, two seconds yeah, I'll go go, get it. yeah go for it why not the video podcast for me as well Plan to show some of your artwork later as well, if I can figure out this screen share. <laughs> so the CIL have these beautiful ceramic oh, plates each year. It's a different one each year, and, and it's usually a different dog. It's usually the dog that's won the year before. Um, and this was his really good idea. Both times, so, uh, his fourth place in the show ring. Obviously, they get much bigger, and they have huge. Um, you know sort of big um, jugs and things as well for different different levels so so yes they do that and they also give those in the um, truffle trial so lynn there's a lovely photograph of lynn with sybil on the um podium with her plate to um that she won so 
Yeah, and you also get you get a, a written critique and um, write up. So um, yeah, so they're, they're they're very good. They have great prizes and great awards. So and it's it it's a it's a fantastic. Is it quite moderate? It's quite expensive to enter. It's about forty eight euros for each class, even the, the working class and the show class. So it is quite expensive, but to be honest, it's well worth it. It's such yeah. a wonderful occasion. You know, uh, you get. I mean, there were nearly 300 dogs in the show in the show classes so and people from all over the world i mean there were 18 yeah. different countries represented in the show classes so people it's it's just an annual event that is there we much all mingling going on excited. or or is it just yes, do you show yeah. up do your trial or are you all going away and having oh, no, no. meals afterwards or uh well <laughs> the, show, the show ring of in mingling with each other on the yeah. on the trial um so what they do is they you have to register early in the morning and they supply um cheese and hams and coffee oh. you turn up and you ha you know and so there's a break they they provided a breakfast which is lovely you you um you register for your um and then you get told who your judge is and where and where you need to go for your class um, but it's a lovely occasion, um, uh, and once all everyone's competed, everyone gathers back down um, uh, in the in where they where you registered originally. Uh, there's a building there with loos and everything, and you know, um, and it and it, again, it's where everyone gets together, and it's it's very friendly. Um, and uh, yeah, there's then they do the awards and and read out who's who's won and. Um, lots of celebration and then after that we all go back down to where they the show ring is which is two or three miles away and they have a big um lunch um after the trials um and there are speeches and again lots of lovely food and wine and it's just a great they mm. are they are so warm and welcoming the italians and it's just it's a highlight of my year going out there it's just it's just lovely and seeing all those amazing dogs working it's just it's it's fabulous to see it really it really really is um so so yeah assuming you can get the uh, the place is it now a regular fixture in your yearly calendar then for the next for the foreseeable oh, or <laughs> oh, gosh yeah absolutely i mean uh, you know this will be i think four or five times i've been I've only competed the once because obviously we missed last year, um, not including the tourist class. Oh yeah, I mean, whilst I can still get there, I wish I yeah. should be going every year, definitely. And you know, it was quite a daunting prospect driving down there. My husband didn't come this year, so I so drove, drove away. The way. But oh, we yeah, went, so we went in convoy. So with several of us, several of us go, and we all we just drive and we stop every two hours, let the dogs have a. Um, have a stretch of leg yeah. and coffee so if we break it up and we did it in over three days um and it's you know the journey is enjoyable too because you stop in really lovely places yeah, yeah. um so it's just a great it's 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 a, a great event in our calendar and every year more and more brits go out um and it'd be lovely if jonathan could does come this year and yeah. i've got various other people who want to go out some people just fly out without dogs and just come watch and take part but i enjoy taking the dogs i enjoy going out and seeing dario's breeder um and he you know so it's it's i i enjoy taking the dogs but not not every so you can go as a, as a, as a spectator um just just um just fly out and and, and experience it then it's it's well worth it um but oh, it uh, sounds yeah. amazing is it in the northern part of italy is it or, or, or i'm not i'm not too keen it's, on my regions but uh emilia well no um it's in bagno di romagna so it's sort of northeastern italy sort of just just about about an hour sort of uh southeast of bologna an hour and a half southeast of bologna um up in the mountains it's a very beautiful area um and uh, known for its truffles in in the right season so yes it's a, it's very beautiful um yeah Amazing. Well, um, I just have a couple more questions for you. I really appreciate your time. And I know it's a, a, a midweek evening here as we're recording here. So um, uh, Breeder for Legotto, how did yeah. 
you was that a planned thing or an unplanned thing and, and i'm guessing now it's quite a, a big thing right in your life yes um i was i'm a farmer's daughter my dad always you know bred animals and things and i've always found that I've always been intrigued by that. So mm. I've always, as, since I was a child, thought, oh, one day I'm going to breed something. I don't know what, but I, you know. And it was, when we found the Legotto, I just thought, oh, this would be, this would be interesting. So um, I, when I bought her, it was on the understanding that I would, I would breed from her, but I had no idea that I would, it would become such a big thing for me. Um, so my first litter with Lola, when she was two years old, I drove, to, or we drove to Holland. Um, because it's a very small gene pool, and it was in those days it was even smaller. It was it was tiny mm. gene pool, um, and Lola, I have to say, is is she's she's quite closely bred. Um, so, looking at the genetics, I wanted some to, to breed out. So I, I went to Holland, yeah. um, and she had five beautiful puppies. Um, and Dora, twelve year old Dora, over there, you can see her back end. Yeah, is one of them. Um, and uh so i kept her i kept dora and then i i kept another um bitch from lola's third litter and those were my sort of lola's obviously my foundation bitch but those were the basis of my of my breeding uh i've now i imported him dario uh so i've now i'm now three or four generations on from from lola um and finding it fascinating i've i've um I've been quite, you know, I've travelled quite a distance for some of my litters. So mm. there's a lovely dog called Gleska for Real, who's in Slovakia, bred in Sweden, uh, but he's in Slovakia. I have been to him three times with Hebe, my other, the, the one, Lola's other um, girl that I've kept. Uh, so I uh, went by train. The first, well, twice she's been out by train to Slovakia to this dog, um, and the third time I used him, I took Hebe. I drove out to Leipzig, so I've travelled quite long distances for the right dogs. I I am so pleased that I used him. He's grandfather to Sage. I used him because of his um, confirmation. Because he's, I saw him at the World Dog Show um, in 2016, and he's, he did extremely well. Um, but also his temperament, he's got the most fabulous temperament. He's very, mm. he's just the most loving dog. He's a therapy dog. And I wanted that temperament. And, and um, he, has, he has influenced my breeding enormously. He's improved my breeding enormously. And so he's got lots of offspring and uh in the uk so he's behind a lot of dogs in the uk so he was a huge a, a great addition to the, the bloodlines in the uk but obviously you have to keep bringing new lines in too um uh so i, fi I find it fascinating um the breeding and also you know recognizing dogs that you know, in I can I can I can see it you know line up in a in a show class and I can tell you exactly who's who's bred what and who what's because I've just I know you know you just can see it. I've been involved in the breed long enough to to recognise breed traits. Um, so which is fascinating, yeah. And is it quite tough? Because I had a small chat with John about this, and he was saying it was. Uh, it surprised him because it didn't meet his expectations initially when he thought, oh, he's going to go and get a dog. Oh, he's going to go and get a Legato. But then when he actually went on the process of actually diving into that, you know, I, I, you know, there were some steps and it wasn't just, uh, is there, well, how does one go about getting a Legato from you? And, and I'm, I'm assuming not just anyone can um, have one of your Legatos. Well, um. The Legato have, well, certainly in the in the past, it was quite difficult to get hold of a Legato because there were very, very few breeders. Rarity, yeah. Um, it's, the breed is becoming more and more um, popular and uh, obviously with with um, Orca's win last year at Crafts, mm, it course, threw yeah. the breed into the spotlight. And as a breed club and as a breeder, um, 
that is a double-edged sword you know you think oh my goodness now everyone's going to want a legato you know she looked very cute and fluffy and appealing so everyone was like oh i want one of those i want one of those um but at the end of the day legato are working dogs mm. they you haven't you don't need to go back They're many dogs. <laughs> generations well they were work, they they were only really bred for their working ability it's only now in recent years that we're we're trying to hone in on the on the temperament and obviously the health health is another issue you know mm -hmm. that's obviously very important but um and genetic diversity but the point is um the temperament is really important and for people who see a fluffy little cute dog on tv on on uh, uh, crafts and they think oh i'd like one of those um and they don't and they're not fully prepared and they don't do their homework and they don't go to the right breeder um they're going to find themselves with a very difficult dog um mm. it's it's you know you it they are very bright very intelligent dogs who um need to be trained from the moment you get a legato, you need to be training it. Not harshly, but you need to train a legato. They've very got a very, very active mind. So they're not couch potatoes. They're not going to, you know, they're very active little dogs. They're working dogs. So if you're going to take on a legato, you've got, to, ideally, you've got to have an active life. You've got to, you've got to train it. And ideally, you give it a job to do. So in my case, mine are gum dogs and truffle dogs. But, you know, if I've worked my dogs then they'll come and lie down and be relaxed and, and easy. But you can't just buy a legato and expect to live in a flat and not, not be exercised. You will have a nightmare on your hands. You really will. And it's very important. We felt it was very important as a breed club to make this clear to people. They're, you know, they, they're, they're a fun dog. They, um, but if you don't train them, they'll train you. Um, they can be quite vocal. They become quite demanding um, if you don't know what you're do what you're doing. So, um, another slight negative um, from from the um, spotlight last year was that some breeders who were not necessarily or who aren't include are involved in breed clubs will see that as an opportunity to make some money, breed breed um, their pet legato. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm trying to generalise and be diplomatic here, but they don't necessarily know the bloodlines. They they may not do the health testing. They may not be registered. They may not, you know, so you've got to be really careful. If you're looking for a legato, it is very, very important to go via a breed club, to go via a breeder that knows what they're doing, who can advise and can support and educate and be there at the end of the phone when you do have a problem. So some of these breeders are setting up and thinking, oh, I'll just make a quick buck. Um, yeah. And then once you, they go, you, the puppy's gone and they may have one or two problems, they don't want to know. Buying any dog of any breed, it's really important to have a breeder that is going to be there for the, for the duration of that dog's life. And, you know, we're all going to have ups and downs with our puppies. They're all puppies are difficult, but you want to be able to pick up the phone or WhatsApp message and say, "Oh, it's just done this. What do I do?" But you know, yeah. so that I to me, it's really, really important. So there are more Legato available, but whether they're from if you if you go to a good breeder, you've got to expect to be on a, on a waiting list. Mm. I've never had to advertise my puppies ever. I've always got I've got a waiting list for my next two litters and i'm starting to pull so uh, you know if you find a litter of puppies of legato puppies on on a well-known <laughs> sort of advertising alarm bells you don't you know it's you've got to be careful you've got to meet both parents of the dogs you know to assess uh, temperament so just be warned be careful you've got it, it's much better to go through um, a reputable breeder yeah no well said well said um i just wanted to change tack slightly um because it was quite yep. uh, nice to learn of um i guess well actually before i jump into that question which about your art um i also 
did a mini bit of reading up on you and you've and you've also got involved i don't know how much involved you are but in in the grooming side of things is that something you're much involved with now or is what i've read a bit out there yeah so i so i um have been a professional artist for most of my working life and i had an agent and um uh i think it was sort of recession you know 10 years ago i just thought gosh i've I've had enough of 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 painting and i wanted to do something that was a bit more of a regular income and Mm. i uh had the legato then um and i enjoyed grooming my dogs so i decided to go and do a grooming i did the sitting and guilds grooming courses um with the intention of setting up as a groomer um i hadn't really anticipated how that would just explode and and i and you know i just i, I had so many people coming to me and and particularly legato people because very few um groomers know how to groom a legato their their coat isn't easy to manage and um uh so i very quickly became very very busy um and um specializing in in legato um and legato pet clips and as well as show clips and it just kind of got a bit over um it, it just took over my life and i and i and i the, the painting was getting more and more distant and i wasn't able to do it so i about 2 years ago i just said right enough um enough with the with the grooming i want to go back to painting so um i mean i carried on draw, doing drawings and and some commissions but i i i wanted to focus on 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 the on the painting but it meant that i i now do have quite a lot of experience with with legato coats and know know the coat very well and know the breed very well i've handled so many different legato of different breeding and things so it was an interesting um chapter in my life and it informed me um as a breeder and as a judge and um as as a a, a, a legato enthusiast you know i i i i have handled probably more legato than most certainly in this country um which was interesting but um i now only i only groom my breeding girls they come here and i groom them uh, you know that's part of the deal um and i will do show trims on dogs that i bred but otherwise right. i don't do any i don't do any more grooming uh, other than my own um so but you know as i say it was i enjoyed it and um i learned a hell of a lot from it and um i i made some youtube videos in, in in lockdown because of my clients couldn't come to me so i thought right i'll show you guys how to so, stuff so, oh wow so, so uh, yeah i don't know if it was those that you saw but yeah i i had there are a few no it wasn't um, how how can grooming. one search for those what would one search for I how to groom a legato and that will pop up or and legato grooms and there's various ones there's some there's some that are, are pet clips um and how to do the head how to do the feet how to do the ears and you know just different parts of the body and then there's a show trim one i did of sage out in my garden so just talking to people how, how how you shape the coat for for showing and prepare the coat so so yeah so i kind of feel like i've left my legacy out it's on youtube out there i don't need to do any more myself <laughs> um, <laughs> Fair enough. yeah and so i i know you sent me a couple of your um well you sent me some stuff and i'm planning to share my screen in a second for the benefit of those who are watching this visually um okay. and for those who are listening listening um we will just have to do our best to describe a little bit of what's going on but um i just thought because there's some really interesting things that you shared and they're they're pretty amazing this is the first time i'm sharing on this thing so what do i do Um, entire screen that'll do so well let me come back to that one so the i know what are what are these what what are we looking at here, and how have you these made these are these these are these are work in progress. So these are okay. very large oil paintings. Um, so near behind in the woodland behind here, um, there is a beautiful oak tree, the king oak. Um, and uh, so I obviously inspired by my um, truffling, um, 
I I started this series that I mean these are big these are about four foot by five foot so I was sort of thinking about the king oak and it's it's the paintings are that big yeah they're big they're big I mean they they're big massive um and then of course you then you visualize obviously with the with the I've recently read um, Merlin Sheldrake's Entangled Life. Oh, yeah. So, of course, you start yeah. thinking about what's going on underneath. Um, yeah. So, the, this is sort of part of my imagination of what, I mean, obviously, it won't look like that, but it's part of my imagination and, and, what, and the entangled life underneath. There aren't truffles here, but, you know, it's just, say. it's just, uh, you know, but, but it, this, it, as I say, it's work in progress. It's just yeah. thinking about that um, network of, of mycelium and and all connected and communicating under under the ground, you know we don't see that we imagine it. So this is mm. this is the start of a series of paintings and drawings that I plan to do. So I will when I finish them, I'll send you them completed. But I just sent them so that you can see what I'm thinking about, what 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 They're I'm amazing. working on at the moment. Um, How would you describe to people only listening what we're actually looking at in this particular picture? I guess. So in this. Painting with so the, the top half of the uh, painting is um, in the forefront is is, is a, a painting of a, a sort of a gnarled old uh, oak um, and then with some brightly coloured it is done in the spring so bright spring coloured leaves and things behind and lots of sunlight dapples on the ground and then um, then you've got you, it's, it's like you dive down into the earth underneath it. So you've got the roots going down, down into the earth and then you've got sort of um, a web of roots and mycelium and going out, uh, filling that bottom half of the of the painting with lots of muted colours and things. So, um, yeah, it's it's um, it was fun to do. And actually, so you can't see how detailed it is, but... Because um, I was thinking, how do I, how do I draw the little tiny it, imply the the mycelium? So what I did was I got thread, cotton, like sort of little thread that you you'd sew with, and I dropped it into a pot of paint, and then just draped it on so that it, oh, it actually wow. you've got very fine mycelium type um, sort of. Uh, yeah, impression under there. Probably, uh, yeah. So you, uh, as I say, you can't see it very clearly on that, but um, but yeah, you can. It's, it's quite detailed on the actual original. Um, so, and so, so those, that's so just, one... what you've sent me is just a photograph of the four foot by five foot that's thing. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a photograph of the of the complete painting. I mean, as I say, if I brought it in here, it would it would stand up against that thing and it would be as tall as that painting is off the ground so it would fill that corner there so and then this is and so what are these yeah Dario. so okay. these yeah. are um, i love i love working drawing on my ipad and these were a series of drawings i did actually it was in lockdown i was just I, and i was drawing my dogs working and so yeah, they're just they're just little drawings of 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 of, of dogs truffling, and that's Dora. They're lovely. This and I Dora, send and I sell these on. Um, I sell these sort of at uh, on um, Etsy and um, things, and I take I've sold quite a lot at I take them to Italy with me and and uh, sell them. So so these are a series of just drawings of 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 dogs working, um, and uh, yeah, so that's what those are. So my my legato have inspired my um, artwork. So, um, yeah, so I used to be an equestrian artist many years ago. That's Dora again. I used to be an equestrian artist for many years, but I still do paint horses. But but the dogs have kind of taken over my my sort of creative process because I live and breathe my dogs every day. So, um, and I just found the the truffling thing so fascinating. Um, so that's what these I think this are. This is my favourite one. Uh, it's very cool. Is it? So Hebe what? here, the brown yeah. one in front here, is that's Hebe. That was my uh, Dora's half sister that I kept. She's the one I took to. That's grandmother. She's grandmother of Sage. I took her to Slov- Slov- Slovakia. So she, yeah. Um, Amazing. So, yeah. Um, 
think I've stopped sharing there. We're back. We're back. Well, no, thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, All right. Cool. So people can just go find you on Etsy, find those things on Etsy if they're interested. I'm, I'm, I mean, depending on, I don't know how much things like that would cost, but. Uh, so my my original artwork is is uh, I sell it under the name of Louise Mizen, M I Z E N, um, mm. and uh, uh, but the. Um, the Legato um, prints I sell under Louise Mizzen Ferguson. I only I added Louise uh, Ferguson to the end of it. I've always worked under Louise Mizzen, but Ferguson, mm. because all my Legato friends know me as Louise Ferguson, yeah, so of course. I, I just you know who I am. I uh, and uh, you know my sort of um, social media is Louise Mizzen Ferguson, but my original artwork is is Louise Mizzen. All my you know um, question stuff is Louise Mizzen. So That's amazing, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, I, mm. I just wanted to end on um, one last, hopefully fun question. Like, what has been your, and it doesn't have to be just one experience, but what has been your standout or one of your most standout truffle, I'm going to say eating experiences to, to start with, and then perhaps you can side spin into standout truffle experiences. Truffle eating experiences? Um, Gosh, I Perhaps can't. I can ask you another question. What was your first truffle eating experience? And I can't remember the first truffle experience. Oh, I tell you, I can tell you exactly what. But, well, <laughs> we we uh, as a breed club, we did a weekend um, truffle training um, and a truffle experience. Um, we called it truffles, truffling, and truffle dogs, and. Um, <laughs> we went to a we went down and stayed down at a, a, a bed and breakfast place down near uh called castle no castle coom castle coom and um so the lady who owns the bed and breakfast karen cooper who has a legato um she one of her neighbors is gerard brown who he and his um partner anastasia um founded sip smith gin oh, so really? Yeah, wow. um, we're big we fans of that in to, this household. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, I went down to um, talk to Karen about it, and she when I went there, she said, "My neighbour thinks he's got truffles in his garden. Would you mind going to have a look?" Because um, apparently he planted a a hedge, a hazel hedge of inoculated trees, or um, yeah, trees. So On purpose, I said, "Okay, I'm we'll go and have a look." Yeah, yeah, did. They did it about yeah. five years ago. Yeah. So he just wanted, okay, cool. he just wanted my dogs to go and have a look. So I took, I took, I only had Sage and Dora with me, uh, and couldn't find anything under that hedge. But the other side of the garden, Sage first of all found a false truffle um, under um, one of his trees, and then found a real truffle. So they were very excited, obviously. So that was a few weeks before. The weekend so he said okay in 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 um uh, sort of gratitude he said i'd like to do i'd like to create a truffle gin so mm. he we um managed to send him a pile of truffles um a, a week before the the weekend planned weekend and he spent that week infusing gin with truffles with black truffle um and at the weekend on the Saturday night, I I cooked a risotto and we had all sorts of truffle infused food and uh, you know various things. But the highlight was this wonderful two he two gins that he he um, he produced. One was it's like a gin martini, um, which was gin with a bit of vermouth in it, and he had these lovely the lovely glasses with you know, uh, and that was delicious. Um, mm -hmm. But the most delicious one was a, a slightly sweet one. I forgot what he called it, but it basically it was it was truffle gin mixed with very good quality vanilla ice cream, and it was delicious. It wasn't. I I mean, when he described it, I thought, oh god, yeah. that sounds really sweet, and disgusting. It wasn't sweet. It was really creamy and delicious. It was just. It was it was like a dessert. It was so lovely. So yeah, gin, truffle, and 
um, vanilla ice cream. That was quite That's, something. That is a that is a real uh, truffle experience. That one there. That's amazing. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, I think that roughly brings us to the, not roughly, but it brings us to the end of uh, this, uh, our time together. I just want to be conscious of your time as well, but this has been fantastic. Um, I really appreciate uh, your time. It's been really enjoyable for me listening to everything that you're saying. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that anybody who does listen to this sort of uh, podcast stuff interested in truffles is going to get a lot from this and really um, find everything you've been talking good. about today really interesting so um good is there any final words that you'd like to say and also where can people go to um i guess contact you about anything really whatever you've um shared tonight your reading or anything well, um, if anyone wants to find out more about legato because obviously that's my you know um biggest interest in in, in this is um then have a look at the Legotto Romagnolo Club of Great Britain website. There's lots mm -hmm. of information about the history of the breed um, and uh, the breed as 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 working dog and show dog. So there's a lots of information there. There's I'm the chairman of the club, um, so my contact details are there. Um, Kath Bransbury is our secretary. So any any um, questions about um, puppies and if they find puppies that they want to ask us about, we're we're happy to help um, and guide people. Um, and uh, there are lots of club events. You know, we we organise club events. Um, people who want to find out more breed, about the breed are welcome to come and attend and meet other owners, our members, um, and and talk about the breed. I know. I just I I think it's so important for any breed of dog. Um, to learn as much as you can about them before you um, get a puppy. Um, mm -hmm. And so there are no surprises. Um, so I think my biggest message here is to, to, to learn more about, about the breed. Um, and in terms of the truffling, um, you know, it's, it's lots of fun and lots of dog owners, whether they're Legato or, or ordinary dog you know, owners, it's, it's great fun. And, uh, you know there are various courses and things out there to, to learn about but you know it's got to be enjoyable for you and your dog and um it's a lovely way of getting out in the nature and uh it's um very as i'm sure you know because you do, don't you do it with your with your dog do you yeah I do. Shuffling with your dog yet yeah he's he's three years old now he's sort of um i guess he had his first season last year but because we've uh, i'm not sure if you've heard but because we've been organizing the truffle festival and, and all of that that's just taken up so much of my time as well as working a full-time job yeah. um i was just chatting to another um somebody who came and competed with her dog and i was saying how's your season been going she's been saying it's amazing it's been you know found loads of new sites and she was saying how she has a four-day work week and then also took an extra day off during her uh, normal work week for the entire season and so she had two days dedicated to truffle hunting and I was like oh I was slightly envious um so I, I am hoping to career shift a bit more than I have been so I can put a bit more time into it but um yeah the future for me really I think is truffle dogs truffle dog training and uh just exploring this it's, it's been one of the nicest things about starting this podcast starting the festival you know, it's just full of lovely people. It, it attracts a really nice, you know, people that are interested in dogs, foraging. Yeah. I think are my sort of people or just, you know, um, nice people uh, on the whole. I ha haven't really um, met anybody not nice. And, and you know, for example, like the friends that I've made already through this, my, the best experience of my life has been receiving an invitation by Julie who was uh, my fourth podcast guest. She's a Liverpudlian. She is now a full-time white truffle hunter out in the Mediterranean somewhere. She's sort of disclosed where she is, but it's wow. a country you wouldn't have thought of. And she invited Danny and I out for three days, three and a half days. And, and from sun up till sundown, we were white truffle hunting and it was just mad. And she invited yeah. me out again. So like, and, and hadn't asked for anything. You know, it was just like sharing and caring. Yeah. And, and um, so, yeah, I've, I've been very lucky and, and I hope it, it continues. It's been lovely to meet you and, you know, hope that we can connect again in the future. And, uh, yeah. 
Come out to Italy. Oh, Come out yeah, to Italy for the definitely on the bucket list, that one. So, yeah, yeah no, I've not been to Italy should. in a truffle sense yet. So that's sort of probably very much missing. I've also been approached by a videographer, film documentary guy to do a truffle type of documentary um, of some sort. Mm -hmm. So that's like a very exciting project. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's, I don't know, I don't know where it's going to go all, but um, just keep on, keep on sharing. There's no one hugely doing a lot of content on truffle stuff. So I thought, because I was, I was one of those guys that was just watching YouTube video after YouTube video of these really makeshift videos of some person filming their dog running around woods and just finding truffles. And I thought, you know, some of the videos I was just watching on repeat because I was just, you know, obsessed by this, but they were like shoddy videos and there wasn't more of it. There was only a certain amount. So I thought, start a podcast, Ben, get a dog, train, share. And uh, I think, you know, so far so good, but we'll see. It's great. Ooh. Stick at cool. it. Well, yeah. have a lovely evening. It's been a real pleasure to speak to you and uh, I hope to speak to you again soon. All Take right. Care. Thank you. Bye. So if you liked that episode, uh, please do tell your friends about it. Help grow the show. It'd be really appreciated. If you'd be kind enough to leave a review as well, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and also, if you didn't know, I've got a free Truffle Forager Facebook group. Um, it's a private community full of truffle hunters, aspiring truffle foragers, people wanting to learn how to train their truffle dogs. And the idea is just to connect, learn and share. So head on over to Facebook and join and search for Truffle Forager Facebook group. Uh, answer the couple of questions, make sure you're a human being and we'll see you on there. Bye for now.